All right, folks, welcome back. Today we'll be playing a new game. This is Dala and the Cursed Forest. The way it was advertised to me, this is another roguelike deck building game where one of the main mechanics is being able to combine cards in the short term getting stronger cards and in the long term being able to earn other rewards as well. The version I'm playing, this is a closed beta playtest version. There's also a demo version available on Steam if you want to try it out for yourself. I will say I have played a little bit before starting this recording. You know, I wanted to get a feel for the game and start to think about what I want to say about the game. So these are not my literal first impressions, but you know, I do want to say at the start here, I really love this title card design. I love this font choice here. Um, you know, some artistic flourishes with these vines on either side. You know, I love the bright glowing title text in contrast to the kind of muted ethereal background here sort of an artistic interpretation of a flame or you know a torch or a sconce or something like that um, i really like the kind of wispy expanding off the top here you know narrow straight down the middle at the bottom framed nicely between these two peaks of this chasm here I like the kind of drifting clouds and also the fog rolling across the foreground, you know, every once in a while. Um, I think it all kind of fits with the background music as well. I did notice that the clouds are kind of like the same shape repeated. It's the same cloud. There's only one cloud. Um, but, you know, with the different sizes and also, you know, the motion, it's not that noticeable. Also, you know, I don't find it too distracting. Kind of the way that I'm interpreting this is, you know, this is kind of like a, a painting, you know, landscape painting here and sort of like in that context, having the kind of simplified and possibly repeated cloud designs, you know, makes sense. And so, you know, I'm really digging this vibe so far. The first complaint that I have, the first gripe that I have is I don't see a place for credits. You know, even if I click on options here, I don't see credits. And so I want to say, you know, thank you to Zai Studio. Zai Studio, thank you for, you know, giving me early access to your game so I could try it out and share it with you folks as well. Before we jump into the gameplay, I do want to check out the Tomes of Knowledge here. You know, if this is a card game, you know, here, these are the cards. We can preview some of the game pieces. You know, this card here does five damage. This card does four damage twice. Here's a defense card the numbers at the top these are the costs of the card you know like energy costs mana costs or whatever it is um, i can also you know they've got relics here things like gain money when you add cards to your deck all right i know what you're thinking because i was thinking it too this looks like slay the spire this is just slay the spire again right and for me, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And so, you know, here's where my head is at, right? Like Mortal Kombat, for example, started out as a clone of Street Fighter, and then it became its own, you know, huge franchise. League of Legends started out as a reskin of Dota and then became its own new thing with a huge universe and lore and stuff like that and spawning all of these other side media projects other than just the League of Legends game itself. Um, even, you know, let's say Monster Train. Monster Train, definitely the gameplay is very different from Slay the Spire because you've got, you know, managing the minions and you've got the different tiered, you know, the different floors of the train, you know, but the interface looks very similar. Like if you just Google a screenshot of Monster Train, it looks very similar to Slay the Spire in the way that like the cards in your hand look and then also, you know, there's the end turn button on the right side, your mana, you know, accumulated, counted on the left side. Anyway, the, the interface, a lot of the UI stuff for Monster Train looks similar to Slay the Spire. So, you know, that's not automatically a red flag. That's not necessarily problematic. The question is though, for the stuff that is new and different, is it enough, right? Like, is this just a glorified Slay the Spire mod? Like this could just be a mod of Slay the Spire or is it actually its own new different game? And maybe, you know, at this point, I feel like maybe it's not quite there yet. And so, you know, I do want to point out that this game is still very early in its development. 
And so it feels like that. It feels like it's early in its development. You know, Bellatro, not even less than a year ago, you know, when only a dozen people were playing it, the game was terrible. And, you know, Gothic recognized, even though the game was terrible, recognized the potential that the game had and sort of like gave the feedback and then gave Local Thunk the motivation that he needed to make the game not terrible, right? And so what we're looking for here with this game, uh, acknowledging that it's very early in its development and, you know, sort of building on top of this base of Slay the Spire, you know, how much new different stuff is there, you know, what, what kind of potential is there. And so the first thing that I'm noticing is, you know, these card designs, I really love how this looks. I really love the way the artwork is framed here. I really love that the card itself is kind of, I can't tell if it's a flame or if it's a petal or, you know, maybe it's a feather. Either way, I really like the card shapes. I like the card designs. Um, this cursor here, I can't tell if it's a moth or if it's a flower petal. Um, I really like this back button, this arrow here. Um, I think, you know, the card designs fit really well with this atmosphere that we have here, you know, on the title page. So all of this aesthetic stuff, all of that feels great. So, you know, if we assume in bad faith that the game doesn't have any new mechanics and it's just a clone, if it's just a reskin of Slay the Spire, it looks good regardless, right? And so, you know, Slay the Spire for me personally is not very pleasant to look at. I really enjoy this. I'm enjoying this experience in contrast. You know, I would rather watch, I would rather look and play this than, you know, rather than playing Slay the Spire. Now, we are promised, you know, there is some new mechanics. There's this mechanic of being able to combine cards. And you can see here, if we right click a card, we get all this information about, you know, these are recipes. If I combine cards, these are the rewards that I get. So, you know, let's jump into the gameplay and we can explore that a little bit. So, you know, here's kind of how the gameplay goes. Um, we can skip some of the tutorial stuff here. So, you know, it looks like, you know, here are my cards in hand, mana on the left. This is three mana per turn. And then I have, you know, end turn button on, on the right here. So, you know, it is Slay the Spire. You know, I drag the card over the enemies to uh, damage them. You know, I can drag the card to play the defense card so that I don't take damage. So here's the, here's the mechanic. Here's the hook, right? I can drag cards together, I get a better card. So like here I've got the recipe here, one attack card, five damage, one defense card, four defense. Putting those two things together, I get this shield card. And then the shield card gives me more damage and more defense than these things separately. So, you know, having combos, you know, not just our you know, are these cards synergistic based on the text of the card, but actually dragging the cards together, creating a new card. Now, after doing that combining, when I do use the card, then the card does separate right away. And so now in my discard pile, I have the two separate components here. So all of the combining of cards, that's all temporary, right? And so you figure out, you know, for this round, I figure out what cards I want to play and then I think about, you know, what cards I might want to combine, you know, what kind of recipes are possible. So maybe another thing to point out is when you combine cards, you collect these, the game calls them cells of different flavors, of different colors. So here's like a, if I combine the attack with the shield, I get a blue cell. If I, I combine, you know, different attack cards, I get a red cell. And so you know, here, having already gotten the blue cell, you get rewarded when you collect four of the same color. And that has to be four in a row of the same color. And so I'll show you kind of what the reward, possible rewards look like. So here I'll do the combining again, and then now I can't play this card. Um, this card, you know, could weaken the enemy, you know, makes it so that they take more damage here, but, you know, we'll just pass here, we'll just skip. All right, now let's do some combining again. So now I've got a different card here. All of the recipes, you know, they give me the purple nuggets or the pink nuggets. Here, attack with defense. That gives me a blue nugget. And then attack with defense again. That gives me another blue nugget. 
Okay, so like the short term reward is you combine cards, you get slightly more, you know, additive effects, you know, slightly synergistic there. If you combine certain cards and you collect enough of these nuggets of the correct flavors here, then you get a temporary buff. And so for right now, for this one turn, I have more energy that I can spend in the turn. I have more mana. I also add some interesting cards to the deck and they're kind of themed. So like if you have a lot of attack things together, then you get this, you get the red cards, right? You get the red character and you get a uh, plus one strength, which increases the damage of all your attacks. Um, the blue one, you gain defense instead of strength here. Um, and you get, you know, kind of like defensive cards, I guess. And you know, the blue or the pink one draws you a card. So this is my reward. I have living seed gives me regeneration. And so if I use it, okay, regeneration says, you know, kind of like enslave aspire. Now every turn I'm going to gain the 10 life and then it's going to reduce by one and I gain another nine and then I gain eight and then I gain seven and then I, you know, whatever it is. And so like the reward for me combining, you know, four times the blue one to get this one effect here, get the regeneration effect is like a huge reward, like an insane reward. You know, if I go in here also, this gives me 50 defense for this card is now added to my deck. And you know, this gives me, allows me to heal uh, a huge chunk of my HP, you know, heal 30% of my HP with just the one card. And so like, you know, one of the things that, that's like kind of challenging about Slay the Spire is your ability to heal from round to round is very limited. And then so you go, you know, from round to round through different combats. And, you know, the main way that you're healing is at specific limited points on the map. You know, these campfires or rest sites or whatever it is. Whereas like here, I can get a ton of healing for very low cost here. You know, just like normal play of like combining cards. And so, you know, this is like one of the concerns I have about playing the game or like, you know, one of the gripes that I have about playing the game is the reward that you get is insane. You know, the reward that I get for combining those four cards um, or those four times was like pretty not bad, pretty not easy to where like now I'm so tanky, I'm so durable. It doesn't really matter what the opponents are doing. I can just keep surviving forever. I can just keep combining cards forever. By the way, um, you know, this 50 defense that you get, in Slay the Spire, however much defense that you have, ends, it resets every turn. Every time you hit the end turn button, it resets your defense. Or, you know, after the enemy attacks, it resets your defense. Whereas in this game, the defense that you have stays. You get to keep it. If I hit end turn, I get to keep my 12 defense. And so if this one card gives me 30 defense or whatever it is, right? Well, it went, it went away. So there, you know, the super powered cards that you get, you only get them for run round and then it's gone and then you got to combine again. So, you know, one concern I have is like how powerful the payoff is for doing the combining. Now, you know, here's another thing. So let's say I combine like this, like we did before and we get the blue one and then I can play it. Then I'm going to make, let's see here. Let's combine and make a red one. So I've got a blue nugget and I've got a red nugget. What that means is in order to get the buff, you need to get four of the same nuggets in a row, four in a row. And they have to be consecutive. So now if I go, okay, so we've got the, the red nugget here. So let's go red. Let's keep doing red. Maybe this guy and then you know, maybe I'll just use a defense card and then pass because I have the regeneration. So I don't really care about this chump. This... All right, then now I can combine, let's see here, you know, two more red ones. So I've got three in a, three in a row of red ones and I can use the attack. And then what I'm going to do, instead of making a red one, I'm going to combine here these and get a pink nugget. And then so what happened there? I went, you know, the blue nugget that I had gets pushed out of the queue. And then here are the four most recent ones that I did, the, la the latest being the pink one. 
And so now I have to start over completely. If I want to get the buff, the mega buff, I have to collect four in a row pink ones. If I get another red one now, it doesn't matter. You know, it's these further back in the queue, these disappear. It really only the last one that you did matters so that you have like chains of like the same flavor. And so like, that's the other gripe that I have. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, you make the thing, you know, somewhat challenging in order to get the payoff and then you make the payoff really big. Well, for me, that feels like it's really, really swingy in the game. Um, you know, high cost, but then high reward. And so here's what I would do differently is, um, I really like that there is this incentive to not just like randomly, you know, combine cards, that there is some incentive to combine like specific flavors of cards. And then you have incentive not to combine. Like, okay, if I make this combination here and I start collecting the blue ones, maybe we keep doing the blue ones. And then we don't combine other cards. Like, I like that. I like that there's some tension there. There's some tension between, do I combine cards to get the stronger effects? Or do I hold off on combining and I combine more limited sets of cards so that I can get the bigger payoff? So what I would want to see is like, instead of collecting four in a row, four in a row sucks. Four in a row is too annoying. Cause then now that I'm at three out of four, now I don't want to combine anything anymore, right? And like, that's kind of sad, right? It's kind of like locking me out of the main mechanic of the game. I would want it to see three instead of collect four. I want to see collect three. I think that would be, you know, for me personally, feels better. Okay, so I do get, you know, here I get the regeneration again, and I can use it. And now I'm gaining 14 life every turn. This monster can only do 15 damage every turn. Like, obviously, it's like early, and it's like a pretty weak monster or whatever. But, you know, even later on, it's like pretty powerful. Okay, so he damaged me. Let's you know, do the defense again, I guess. You know, if I want him to not hurt me, I could do the defense and then hit him. All right, there we go. Now the question is, what card do I want to add to my deck? And this question is, partially based on synergy you know like i just read the text like oh is that synergistic with something that i'm doing like for example there's a card that gives you strength every time a card is exiled and then maybe i take the thing that exiles itself but like that's synergy that's a combo there um or another thing to consider is if i right click the card i can see the recipes and with the recipes i can see oh this giant breath or gaint breath or whatever the breath card the recipes doesn't combine with anything that I currently have. You know, last shot doesn't combine with anything that I currently have. Cure doesn't combine with anything that I currently have. So I guess that's like kind of true about all of these, but like that's a thing that, that I consider like, okay, does this combine with any of the cards that I already have? Like if I already have the cure, I can see that it combines with last shot and maybe I can, if I have one go for the other. Another thing to consider is, you know, when I take the last shot, what flavors of combinations it has? What, you know, what flavor nuggets can I get? And so there is some incentive with the deck building to not just strictly go for synergy, but to go for what are the specific flavors of nuggets. So I get a lot of the same one. And then so it's easier for me to get the mega power up when I have a lot of the same one. So I think that's interesting there, right? Like I said before, it's interesting, this tension between do I combine the cards or do I not combine the cards so that I can save up for the mega buff, right? Like that's interesting. I think it's interesting here also with the deck building. Do I go for pure synergy or do I go for trying to get a lot of the same flavor of nuggets so that I can get the mega buff there? Like I think that's interesting. So here I think I don't want any of these. I think I don't want any of these. Maybe I could take the health, you know? Now, 
the way that the navigation works in this game so you'll see if, I, if I'm walking from left to le right here um, you can use the wads to move you can jump and stuff like that supposedly there's a, a shift to run but you know I don't know I haven't noticed a difference with the speed um, you can also just click and then it'll follow the mouse so like all of this you know like this the characters are cute this little sprite here is cute the movement feels fine and so like as like a platforming game as like a platform like all of this is like neat right but this is this is not really what the game is the game is the card game and so the question is like what is this doing this like platforming part well what it's doing is i choose a portal i choose a path um this is not a great example because these are all identical but what it looks like on the map is I'm here, I just beat a bad guy. And then these are my three paths that I can take. So, you know, here if I choose the one on the left, then it takes me to question mark, that's like a event path, right? And so the event path is, you know, I can talk to this guy if I wanna to talk to this guy. And then I choose a path here, you know, these two portals. And that's, you know, this here or that there. So again here, this is the same as Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire, you have the map, it's vertical instead of this horizontal here. And the way you progress is you just click the nodes. You just click the next one on the map. And so here you have to like physically walk to the path, physically walk to the portal. The question is like, does this add anything to the game? Like obviously this is cool aesthetically, like this is a very pretty scene here. I think, you know, the art direction is great. You know, I think they did a great job in like this frog character here. I think he's really cute, really cool. But the question is like mechanically, how is this different or what does this add compared to just clicking nodes on the map? If it's like kind of annoying for me to like go and walk to the portals. Also like you have this mini map here, this mini map in light blue and it's like kind of hard to see this against the everything else is like blue and teal and stuff like that and so like if i'm just like naively walking along here i like see one portal here and i might miss the other portal not really on this map like on this map the portals are kind of close together but there's some maps where like you know here um you know there's a gap here these paths are far away from these two paths over here and so like in this stage there's a gap also and so like you might see the first couple portals but you might miss the other couple portals or whatever um, if I talk to this guy you know here's what the event looks like the text by the way when you click you can make it progress faster if you want but if you want it to stop or progress slower you, it doesn't stop it just scrolls automatically and so like when I was first playing through and I, uh, there's like some introductory lore when you first start your first run. Um, I missed a lot of it because it would just keep scrolling automatically and I couldn't stop it and I couldn't go back. So, you know, like that's like a, a minor, that's like a minor thing, that's like an easy thing to fix. Um, here, you know, this kind of like random selection here, this interface is just like in Slay the Spire where like you have um, for a random event, you have some picture representing the random event, you have some text telling you what the random event is about, and then you have some choice to make. And so, you know, here, I don't know, I'll take the, the mystery or whatever, whatever that is. What is that? I added a card. It says, add a black hole to your discard pile. Now, when I mouse, mouse over this, I can right click on it and it'll tell me what the recipes are, what the combinations are, but it doesn't tell me what is a black hole right <laughs> I don't know um, and that's just like a thing um, anyway uh, yeah does having this character that I can walk to and then I have to like push a button to talk to them is that better than just having like a splash screen with like text on it anyway uh, which way do I want to go maybe I want to go on the map here is there let's do the fight All right, so we got a monster here, and we said our game plan is to go for, you know, combos, certain combos. What flavor combos do we want to go? Let's go mixed. Let's do the same. Let's do the blue one like we did last time. 
So here we did the shield and we'll get some defense and then we get to save our defense for the future. Um, we can go here with the defense and what does this do? So this gives me defense but it gives me a black hole so maybe that's something that I'm not interested in doing so I'll just do a regular attack here and then pass. Alright, so this card, you lose one life to draw a card, is pretty nice in that, you know, once you combine it with something, you don't have to lose the life. But since I'm going for the blue nuggets, this is a card that I don't combine then, right? Because I am incentivized to only get the blue ones. And then also, like, since this cost me one life, maybe I don't want to play it, actually. So, what can I do instead? I guess I could lose the life and then I could use the cure here to gain the life. Well, I'm going to go provoke. Weakens him so he takes extra damage. Then I'll do the extra damage and then... I don't know, that's it. Uh, just go next, I guess. Where's... I want to get to here. I want to get to this rest stop, you know, where the, the food is. So I could tell you about the food. I drew a burn card because this guy gave me a burn card. And there we go. You don't have to play the cards, by the way. You just have to combine them. You get the credit. You get the nugget when you do the combination. Um, this heals me by 30%, which is not something that I can currently do. So I guess, you know, I'm already at max HP. So I guess I'll just attack and then pass. All right, let's do the same flavor combinations here. Um, I can keep stacking defense if I want, or I'll just weaken him and then that way he dies faster, takes more damage. I already have 36 defense here. Definitely, I think with this game, you know, like I said, it's uh, very early in its development. And, you know, for that reason, there's definitely balance stuff, right? Like there's balance issues, but like balance stuff, that's something that you figure out way later on down the line. Like that's just numbers. You just change the numbers. You change the, you know, cost of cards. You change the, you know, if it gives you an attack, change it from six attack to seven attack. You change it from three defense to two defense or whatever it is. Like you could, you could just change numbers. The question is like, are the mechanics worth it? Are the mechanics compelling enough? Um, here I could pick up a sacrifice card. Sacrifice card I can co combine with my Endure here. It still gives me a black hole, but it gives me one of these pink nuggets potentially. Um, gain mana, but also you become weakened. But if I get the combination, then I don't become weakened. So like that's an option. Here the enemy loses strength. Doesn't combine with what I have. Here spirit gift. I could potentially get you know, these pink nuggets here. What does Spirit Gift do? Whenever you draw a curse card, draw one card. So, you know, if I draw like a, a black hole, it'll replace it, maybe? I don't know. Um, these things, maybe I'll take the sacrifice because that's compatible with what I have. Now, um, in the navigation here, you know, going to the next round, there's also these like random loot boxes here. So there's like a box here that just gives me like randomly a few extra coins. Sometimes they show up right here where you start. Sometimes they're like way over here. And so like, as I'm like going through the navigation, I might see the portals and I might miss the loot box if I don't go all the way over there. Also the loot boxes don't show up on the map. All right, now between these two options, it looks like, you know, here, I have a 36% chance to get a coconut. Here I have a chance to get a potion as well. You know, potion that does damage here. I have more money. So maybe I wanna, between these two fights, I wanna pick this fight here. And, you know, looking at it on the map, I said I wanted to try to go to, you know, this food here. So actually I'm gonna go left instead. We will talk about food eventually. Let's... So if I combine the 
cards. If I get the sacrifice with the endure card, I get the pink nugget. So let's make some pink nuggets. Let's attack this guy that's weaker here. And now I don't want to combine because the recipes here, I, you know, I don't, I get either a blue or a red nugget. So let's go defense and then attack this guy here. So these are kind of like slimes in Slay the Spire where when they're below a certain amount of health, they like do a thing. Like in Slay the Spire, they split, they become copies. These instead, they explode when they're low on health. Um, I have the sacrifice card, but I don't have the card to combine it with, so I'm not gonna use it. Um, I could gain weakness right now. I guess it doesn't matter if these guys aren't gonna attack me. You know, the weakness is temporary. Maybe what I can do is make this guy vulnerable and then attack him and then use my defense card, saving the defense for the future. All right, uh, we've got a black hole here. Um, I don't want to combine. I could use the endure for the defense and then get the black hole again, get another black hole. I don't want to get another black hole. Let's attack this guy and then activate the defense. So the black holes, they don't really hurt you. They're just unplayable. So like you draw them and then it's just like a wasted draw. All right, with this other guy here, we will combine, get another pink nugget and go defense. Let's go defense. Okay, he's gonna try to debuff me. Uh, I'm gonna gain my four life. And I guess I'll use defenses. And if I want, I could weaken him, but you know, it only lasts one turn anyway. Okay, uh, endure again, I could. He weakened my defense, but I'm still gonna use my defense cards anyway. Like a, a very viable strategy, at least it seems like is, you know, just stall and then, you know, wait for the combining, right? So let's get another pink nugget here. And he's going to explode now. So I guess I'll do my defense and then end. Even if you take a huge beating, if you, even if you take a lot of punishment, then you know getting like the defense mode where you have like the four blue nuggets can make up for a whole round of stuff all right i could get the breath um cleave or double attack the thing that i'm looking for is none of these give me the pink nuggets i want to go for the pink nuggets and then maybe i'll show why later Maybe I'll be able to show why later. All right, next what I want to do, okay, do I want left or right? Do I want, you know, here strength or do I want, you know, this banana juice? Well, you know, this doesn't really matter to me. You know, like the, what is being offered here, what matters to me is going to the map and seeing what the future path is, right? Like this is the information that I actually want. What I actually want is like, how do I get as many elite fights as possible? How do I get as many like resting sites as possible rather than like this stuff here? Um, let's I guess I'll take the strength potion. All right, so this slime again has the same kind of does damage does more damage let's go for I want to show you the pink nuggets I want to show you what the pink mode looks like um, I guess this is okay to do the black hole is maybe not that bad Okay, uh, sacrifice 
for... Okay, these guys are not going to attack me, so I can do that. Then play the defense cards. Alright. Get the pink one. Yeah, by the way, while I'm like just like kind of busting through this guy here, I will say if the thing that you want to do is like copy a game, if you want to clone a game, there's still like a lot of work involved. So like if you just want to like as a project copy Mario, make a clone of Mario. Like you still have to make all of the platforms. You still have to like do all the UI stuff. You have to make it look pretty and like okay, if even if this game is, you know, at its base kind of building on top of a lot of like Slay the Spire stuff, it still like feels nice, it still looks nice, right? You know, credit where credit's due there. Um, I don't need sacrifice. Um, let's not combine here. I'm being very picky with my card combinations so that I can go for the pink one specifically. Just because I, I want to demonstrate it. I want to show it. So... We're close. I just need the the Mega Defense card at the same time as the Endure card. Like it's kind of tough to get there. Like later on, of course, when you have the better deck built, you know, deck building. Sorry, I need the Mega Defense card at the same time as the Sacrifice card. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Later on, you get the better deck building. It's like easier for you to get the bonuses. But then like that's part of the problem <laughs> is it becomes too easy to get the bonus or you know whatever specific one that you happen to be going for. Alright, um, let's combine, let's get the pink one. I'll show you what the pink one does. So pink one one of the cards is it does poison to all the enemies another card makes all your stuff cost zero forever for the rest of combat so let's do that this now does 10 poison this i can attack this i could get the mega defense if i want so i guess i will and i'll end and like that you know, poison card is still in the deck now. I get to keep it forever. Whereas like with the defense mode, the cards go away. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's supposed to be like that. All right, um, with these things here, again, I'm looking for the pink combines here. I could combine this with the cure card and then get blue nuggets, but I wanted to go for the pink ones because there is the card that like makes all your stuff free. Like reduces your card costs. All right, so now we've got a hard enemy here, difficult enemy. What can we do against this guy? Um, let's go for the pink. Um, I guess I could go for the blue stuff. You know, the kind of defense stuff. It'll be easier to get the blue ones, right? So this boss, or this elite, or like hard enemy, or whatever it is, the way that it works is, whenever you combine cards, he gets stronger. Like, that sucks. Because <laughs> then it's basically like, okay, well, now I just can't play the game anymore. Basically. Or maybe I gotta take the chance anyway. There is, a, for the pink character, when you get the four pink nuggets, there is a card that like removes all buffs from a target. And so you can remove, you get all of the pink ones and then you remove your opponent's buffs. That can be a thing. That can be like a particularly powerful thing. I hate this card. The card that like 
weakens your opponent and then makes it so that they take 50% more damage. I think the cost of it is too high for what it does. Or maybe like, it's just bad early. All right, so I get the shield here, 50 defense. Who cares how much uh, attack this guy has? I have 50 defense and I get to keep the 50 defense forever. And so maybe, you know, maybe we'll just keep spamming the blue one. And maybe, yeah, we'll go, okay, defense again. And I'm not gonna pay the one life, I'm just gonna attack him. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna spend any energy, I'm just gonna combine cards. Okay, holy shield, again. Now 100 defense, 100 defense that doesn't go away. So obviously there, in my opinion, like the defense is just like too powerful there. So if you wanted to like rebalance it, all you gotta do is change the numbers, right? Okay, well, it gives you 30 instead of 50, right? You know, or it gives you 20 instead of 50 or whatever. Um, I wanna go for the, these cards are never bad. Zero cost to draw a card and you get to combine it with something, you get to add it to something else. Um, here, heal five every time I start a battle. That's great. So here's like, here's a portal. I can't see the other portal. You know, if I, the mini map is, like I said, you know, with it being light blue, it's kind of hard to read. I can't see the other portal. And I miss out on these, you know, pots unless I go all the way over there. Now in the rest site here, you can do either rest and heal or upgrade a card. Um, I'm going to rest and heal just to demonstrate, but you know, normally here I would upgrade a card, but you know, if I go rest and heal, this is how it works. You get like free healing that you can order. We could just order rice or these food items that you're collecting, you know, using it potentially is not very powerful, but what you can do is you can buy food. You can convert it the way that the coconut gives you one health if you use it in an emergency situation or I can hold on to it and take it to the shop and get 15 healing. Um, if I hold on to the ham, then that gives me 15 healing. If I have the combination chili pepper and ham, then I get a permanent, well, no, this is a one strength at the start of the next comment. So it's not permanent, but it is like a huge bonus here, heal 30 or whatever. And so like, this is potentially interesting to me. You know, this idea of like, which path do I choose is dependent on me trying to collect different combinations of food and then collecting different combinations of food, you know, makes this interaction more valuable. So like currently I can only do this. I can only do rice. I can't do these other things. So like resting and healing there was actually like very useless. So like that's another new different mechanic that could be potentially interesting. All right, here I can finally go sacrifice with endurance and we get the pink nugget. What does this do? This gives me mana and defense. So we'll take the defense and the mana and we'll do the attacks here. There I could combine the attack cards first and get the combine the pink second. Um here I don't need. I'm gonna keep saving for the pink nuggets. These guys rob me when they attack me. This guy heals instead of attacking me. That's kind of stinky. All right, so we get another pink one and then you get to draw. And then you get another pink one and then you could potentially get a draw or I'm gonna combine here. So like, I think the pink ones are very powerful um, for the reason of like, because the cost is zero when you add it to something else, then it allows you to play a lot of these in one turn. And then because it draws you a card, you get to draw and then play potentially like play another one and then it'll replace itself. And then after you get all the pink nuggets, 
then I get to use it to draw. So like when you get the upgraded mode, the upgraded form or whatever, the cards go into your deck and you don't draw them right away necessarily. But if you combine and create these pink cards with the, or the, the pink nuggets with the offering card, then that allows you to draw the powerful stuff right away. And then I can use the hand of God card and make everything cost zero. And then now I have this zero cost. This gives me additional mana every turn forever. It's like a permanent mana boost. I can also, I made this combined, you know, defense card so I can play it, giving me 18 defense. But then now I have none of this stuff combines to make pink nuggets. You know, here I can make blue again, here I can make red again, and you could like pivot, right? You could like, we did all the pink ones, now let's do something else. Now let's do blues for a while, or now let's do reds for a while. If like, it looks like these guys are going to run away, and then now I need to kill them faster or else they're gonna run away with my money then I might go for the red nuggets. Yeah, so like this guy's gonna run away now. Um, I could go for, you know, more red here combination. Maybe I could go for a card draw here. I'm not gonna get enough red cards to get, you know, like four in a row. So I'll just use it. Well, that didn't really work either. Yeah, this power attack, that's not gonna do it. This guy's gonna steal all my money. I wasn't like, you know, trying that hard to kill him that fast. You know, I was going for the pink stuff instead of going for the red stuff. Um, these cards I'm not really into, so I'll just skip here. We lost 10 bucks. Maybe that's not that bad. We lost a chili pepper, maybe that's not that bad either. All right. Now, here are my portals. Both of them do the same thing. Both of them give me a treasure chest. But what really do I care about is, you know, on the map here, do I want left gives me, you know, food or right. So let's go food. All right, that guy gives me another chili pepper. This gives me another relic that I can use. So here's another thing that's different about Silly the Spire is like you collect these relics and you have a limited number of slots and then so there is some like decision making with like swapping them in and out in potentially like different contexts and so like that's like a cool interesting thing and you can also in the shop you can sell you can get rid of relics. Alright versus this boss here or not a boss but it's like a hard enemy. He's going to make me confused. So let's make a blue one and then pass. Um, I could remove the debuff if I want. I have a potion that'll do that. Um, but here's the thing that I can do like here. I drew the car card and it randomized the cost. I'm confused, so it randomizes cost. But if I combine stuff here, offering plus defense, now it only costs one. If I combine sacrifice with endurance, now it only costs two, which is what it normally costs. It's like you can use that to kind of like cheat a little bit on this thing. Or if I wanted to, I could just remove the debuff. Alright, I can combine here, I can get, I should have combined with the attack, but I still can, so I will. Because it costs four and then now I reduce it to one. So like, there very quickly, rather easily, I was able to get, you know, the upgraded mode here. And then also like, if I have better card choices, if I have better deck building choices, I can make it even easier. You know, by choosing which cards I add and which cards I don't add, I can make it easier to get the upgrade. Um, here, this card removes all buffs and debuffs from an enemy. And so like this boss or this elite enemy has a thing where when he's reduced to low health, he'll resurrect, he'll come back. 
But I can just straight up, I can remove that if I want. Um, yeah, let's remove his special thing. Now he won't revive. Um, I can combine endurance with... I'll make the... I'll go attack with defense. I'll try to save up for the pink ones again. Or maybe we should be going for the blue ones. So here with the offering card, let's combine it with defense for the cost reduction. Then go defense. I guess I could provoke. I'm gonna take a ton of damage here. This run is not going super well so far. But that's like kind of okay, I guess. I'm gonna use this for nine defense and then attack him. He's gonna hit me for 20. Okay, now I can get the defense and I can combine the attack. Four nuggets, now I have again here, I can remove buffs and debuffs so I could, you know, cleanse myself here if I want. I'm actually going to draw looking for my better cards. Like here, poison. Huge poison damage. Use that on the bad guy. Now I can just stall and he'll kill himself with poison. Alright, endurance here. I guess we'll combine defense and attack again. Stalling is not necessarily the best tactic against this guy. This guy doing so much damage to me. But I can go, you know, more, let's say, attack with defense here. Nice. Um, yeah, do I want any of these cards here? I could, you know, potentially make more. Break weapon combines with provoke and then gives me a pink nugget. Maybe that's something that I want to be doing. Weakens enemies. Nah. I want more of this card. More of the offering card. Okay, so here's another food place here. I can equip another relic here. Then... I could take the healing and now I do have the coconut so the coconut is worth uh, plus 15 healing. I could use the mushroom for healing as well. Um, I'm going to upgrade a card. And so maybe what I'll do... I'll upgrade the offering that way I draw more cards at a time. Uh, by the way this is how like card... When you combine cards, if one of them is upgraded, then you get a plus one card. You know, it's an upgraded version. All right, go next. All right, this guy shuffles roses into the deck. I forgot what that does. So let's attack. Um. Maybe let's go defense. Save up our defense. Alright, offering with another attack. And I get to draw two now. Um, let's go one defense and do I want to heal? I guess. It exiles, so then it'll you know, go away forever. Alright, I can combine offering with defense. 
At the end of your turn, lose one cell is what the rose does. And so I'm going to lose whatever kind of progress I have. You know what I could do? I could combine these defense. And then I'm going to lose the blue cell, I think. Let's try it. No, I lose a random cell. Oh, that's devastating. Because now I got the blue one instead of the pink one. I wish it would have told me. Because now... It completely reset my progress by me playing those two blue ones. And so I said this earlier, but that's like kind of a gripe that I have. Maybe I should just do this. I'm going to lose them anyway to the roses now. That's huge. <laughs> I lost the blue ones and I got the big ones. Like, I feel like it should just be three in a row rather than four in a row. Getting four in a row is really hard. And the trade-off is, if it's only three in a row, then, you know, the deck building is a little bit easier, you know, as far as, like, what cards I add to my deck. I don't have to care as much what color flavors they are. Um, you can build your deck around, like, two options. You can go, like, split between pinks and blues if you want. Um, you can, if it's only three, the trade-off should be, like, the reward should be much less powerful much less impactful it's really feast or famine right now and feast or famine in general just doesn't feel good all right those are all my attacks give me two offering cards there's one offering card i need to draw the other offering card nice so now we unlock the pink powers here. I can draw first, use the cost reduction second. Like that's huge. Uh, remove all of his buffs, right? And then poison him. And then use the defense. And you know what? Let's use the mega defense here. Um, is there a way for me to heal in a reasonable manner? Seemingly not. Seemingly not. I could do this. Defense. I clicked too fast there. There was no confirmation. That card I very much don't want in my deck, actually. Let's go to the end here. Um, here's an event. Uh, remove a random card from a deck. Add a new card to the deck. Let's remove a card. So the provoke card that I added, let's get it out of here. <laughs> Not the optimal use of that. All right, uh, I can talk to this guy. I can smash the box. It's not immediately obvious that that box is separate from the guy. All right, we can buy stuff now. We can sell stuff. I can sell, you know, if I don't need all of these chili peppers, I could sell them. All right? If I don't need this coconut, I can sell it. If I want to shop here, I can add cards. I could pick up these relics. So like, what does this do? When you enter a restaurant, no. Uh, when you add a card to your deck, you get money, but it costs me money, so that's probably not going to pay off in time. Um, discounted. This is what I want. Blood Rage. That says, whenever a card gets exiled, you gain one strength. And when you get the nuggets, like the four nuggets, a lot of the super power cards that you get exile themselves and so you can use that as a way of like getting a lot of strength like blood rage is like pretty strong um heal an enemy gain coins um pay gold do a thing yeah i think i don't want any of this stuff here i could get a potion gain one white nugget i don't know what white is Unless I've been like calling them the wrong colors. Maybe white is generic. It could be any flavor nugget. Gain one repel, gain one red cell. Wait, this is white cell. 
Is this white? Is this white? Which one's white? I don't see any white. I see blue, I see pink, I see red. Um, what's repel? It doesn't tell me what repel is. Let's remove a card from the deck. I can remove this other piece of trash. Alright, go next. Um, I have two restaurant options. This is right before the final boss. Okay, at the restaurant here, let's upgrade another card. Let's upgrade the Blood Rage. That way it gives us more strength per exile. And you know, let's check to make sure there aren't any things. All right, so, you know, we can do the damage to the guy. We can heal ourselves. If we get a debuff, we can remove a debuff. What I want to do is get the pink nuggets. Um, I'm not gonna use the mega defense. I don't wanna get the black holes. Okay, he's gonna summon extra dudes. Oh, I should have saved the potion that, I forgot that he does that. I should have saved the potion that, you know, damages all the dudes. So let's get another pink nugget. Um, I'm gonna attack this one. I could play my blood rage so I can start to get strength for the future and maybe play a defense card. Yeah, so now we just combine. Uh, let's make another attack and we get to draw two. Maybe before we use it, we can combine here. We can get another pink nugget. So we get upgraded. Now that we got the upgrade, now let's draw the upgraded cards. You know? And then let's use Hand of God to get the discount on all of the cards that we drew. Um, we can get the mana regeneration for the future, we can poison all the enemies, we can, you know, so when we were playing with the blue mode, the defense mode, you can only use one of the cards that you get. Whereas like, with the pink mode, the after combining, you use the offerings to draw all of your powered up cards, and then you just play all of them in the same turn. Um, I can remove buffs from the enemy, I probably should have done that, you know, before I did the poison, I forgot about it. Um, here's something that I'm curious about. So this guy has an effect that he won't die if there's another harpy around. So like when this goes to zero health, it stays alive as long as there's both of them around. What I can do is I can remove that effect. Is it worth it to do that? This guy has some strength here. I'm going to remove his strength. Yeah. And then of course that exiles, and then so I get strength myself, because I have the card that gives me strength every time something exiles. So, let's go... Get a blue nugget, and a red nugget, and I don't really care that much. But... Let's... 16 damage here. Both of these die to poison, so let's attack the boss now, and then pass. Boost, okay. So let's go again, combine, and draw. I will use the cure at exile, so I get plus two strength here. Right, I'm gonna hold off on using the Mega Defense, you know, because of the Black Hole cards. All right, we can go get another Pink Nugget, and so I've got four Nuggets, but it doesn't matter until I get four of the same exact one. I don't really care what this guy does. You know what his plan is? His move here. 
Um, yeah, still spam the poison. That's another thing. Once you have the poison card in your deck and you get the cost reduction on it, then, you know, all of these uh, offerings, extra offerings, they like replace themselves when you draw them. So you can just like churn through your deck. You just like dig through your deck very quickly. And just repeat the poison. Okay. Again here, get the draw. Okay, then get the cost reduction. Okay, uh, enemy is poisoned. I get the mana regeneration. I can remove his buffs if I want, but I'm not going to. Now he takes 27 per turn. And, you know, that's, that's kind of another thing about like the card or the reward for combining is so powerful that it doesn't, I don't really care that much what cards I'm playing. All I care about is getting the nuggets or not. Because the, the rewards, the cards that I get from getting the combine, the better cards that I add to the deck are like way more impactful than any, anything else that I could be doing. Alright, uh, we attack. Uh, he's got 46 poison on him, so you know I could do the mega defense here. I can just pass. Um, here is a choice that you get after the boss, but since this is a demo, then that's it. You know, this is like the end of Act 1, and then there's a little conversation here. And then that's it, if you want to like you know, wishlist the game so that you can get it when it comes out. Anyway, so final thoughts, parting thoughts here for Dala and the Cursed Forest. Um, aesthetically, I think it's great. Aesthetically, I think there's a lot going on here, a lot that I like. You know, it's got a very particular vibe. Um, you know, reminds me of Ori, maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, looks very nice. You know, it feels good enough feels nice um you know for like the strategic elements of the game definitely there are like some balance issues but that's like kind of early in development and so like that's something that's going to get resolved later you know get rebalanced later um you know with the mechanic of the card combining i think there is some interesting stuff going on there you know when i say interesting i mean there's like decision points right there's like do i do this or do i do that um, and like what reasons do I have for one or the other, you know, just like um, in Bellatro, this long-winded question of like whether or not we skip, you know, when is it worth it, when is it not worth it, um, you open up an Arcana pack and you're trying to pick which thing is going to be the best thing, you know, do I buy the Joker, do I not, there's all these decision points, right, and there's all these nuances where it's like contextual, it's not just you always do the same thing every time, and I feel like, you know, this uh, card combining mechanic has that same kind of potential has that potential um, could be cool could be good um, with it this kind of early in the development like I said we can't really evaluate it we can't re it's not we're not reviewing the game right this is not a review this is not a complete game um, this is just here are some things that stood out to me as being kind of weird the like four in a row is tough and then the reward that you get is like insane and so maybe only three in a row. Maybe the reward that you get is not as powerful. Those are my thoughts. I feel like I repeated myself a bunch of times. <laughs> All right. Uh, try it yourself or not. Take care, everyone.